who will win the Super Bowl? Sell me on a team. You know, it's hard right now to predict the Super Bowl winner, but I'm going to tell you why the Kansas City Chiefs are going to repeat because they've got the not only the reigning MVP and Super Bowl MVP, or MVP is Patrick Mahomes, who's 24 years old. Their offense will be better than it was last year with what they did in the draft. And their defense, as the year went on, got better and better. And I think with Tom Brady out in the AFC, they have even less resistance to get back. So if I'm picking a team right now, the Kansas City Chiefs repeat. Welcome on in to Drinks with Binks, working from home slash wasted from home. I'm Julie Stewart Binks. We have been working from home for a very long time now. It's got to be over two months, which seems crazy because it could be two days or 200 days. I don't really know anymore, but we're staying home to stay safe because we are in an unprecedented time right now. And we know that the world is going through a whole lot. And so in that time, we want to be able to still bring you some fun, some insight and some awesome interviews with athletes, broadcasters and entertainers from all over the world. And today I'm so excited to be able to welcome in my friend and also the highly esteemed broadcaster from Fox Sports, host of MLB on Fox and play-by-play commentator for NFL on Fox, the one and only Kevin Burkhart. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today, all the way from California. JSV, it's so good to see you again. Yeah, it, it, we, we live in different places, but we are still locked in our houses, so I guess we essentially are the same. Yeah, we're all, you know, staying home to stay safe right now. And Kev, got to ask you, what sort of a day in the life for you? How have you been keeping busy? Um, So I was how when the timing was, I was supposed to go, you know, with our crew to cover the Pac-12 basketball tournament in Vegas. And, um, you know, my flight, I I guess this was on a, I'm trying to think what day, Wednesday or Thursday, but my flight was the next day. and, And this was all these things are starting to be canceled. The NBA was canceled the night before, and then the Big East tournament started, and then midway through, they, they pulled the guys off the floor, and I'm like, oh, boy, we're not going. This is this is a done deal, right? And uh, and then it's just, you know, like everybody else, just trying to figure it out. It's just been weird in the terms for me, in you know, like you, like we're trying to figure out how to do TV in, in the COVID era. So I've done our Safe at Home baseball show every Friday from home. I've done different things for Fox from home, which um, my small little office was not designed for television but we're making it work and I, I think the weirdest thing is that you know for me for a broadcaster and you're always prepping for the next thing so right. the next game or the next big event or like the next I don't know sports season whatever it is well when there's nothing on the calendar when there's nothing being played there's no news there's no games on the calendar even we don't even know when they're, they're when they're coming back yet I mean we're hopeful um it's just like, what do you do? I think the best term to describe it is just weirdness and unsure of exactly what to like, wake up like, all right, what, what do we do today? No idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's something that we never would have expected in the world and, and never sort of thought we'd have to go through. And you mentioned always looking toward the next thing, preparing it for you. You've had to balance so many things. You know, you're hosting MLB on Fox. You're also doing games. You're also doing NFL games. And then now, as you mentioned, you're doing college basketball. You kind of have like your year all planned out. And even as a broadcaster, you're always, as you mentioned, you're looking towards that next sport, even that next job. You're sort of thinking, what am I doing now to like maybe someday be able to get this incredible gig down the road? But right now we've all had to sort of pause. And other than it being weird, like how has it just been mentally for you in terms of you've always had a schedule? You've always had something to look forward to. Like how have you sort of dealt with the other side of it? I'm just keeping yourself sort of level headed, I guess. Yeah, I'm, you know, and I, I need stuff to do. Like, don't get me wrong. I love days to chill and do nothing and whatever. Um, but, you know, I need I need like stuff to do. I need like a routine or stuff to, you know, kind of keep my mind occupied and keep me occupied. So initially I was struggling with it. And the other thing is, I mean, I can't remember the last time I haven't been on an airplane in this long amount of time. It's right. very, very strange. I mean, I'm usually at the airport at least once a week, if not more. Um, so that part has been just weird. So, hey, it's been great to be home uh, and have great family time. And that's been amazing. But it's just, you know, you're looking for like, I'm trying to think like, okay, how do I prepare myself when this stuff does come back? So yeah. I've done as much prep, I think, as I can do. I've watched some yeah. old games to try and critique, you know, myself and watch some others. Like, how could I get better? I've done some of that with my coworkers too, just kind of trying to help each other that's out. Why really not? Really good like, idea. Yeah. yeah, it's a good time because usually you, you don't like have enough time to really do it. So I've tried to do that, but I mean, in reality, I mean, it's no sugarcoating. I'm not doing a hell of a lot. <laughs> just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, try, try not to be 400 pounds is basically what I'm doing now. 
Yeah, no, that that's that's a very good goal. And um, before we get to the drinks on the show, just one follow up on that. What is maybe one thing you noticed about your on air work that that now you've reviewed and you've said, oh, wow, I, I you know, I couldn't do that better or I could work on that. You know, it's funny, like when, we're, when you're in the middle of a season, I try and watch a little bit or like segments or like snippets, but it's it's really hard to watch a full game because you're always on like the next thing. So, you know, I rely on some others who I trust to kind of watch my stuff and critique. And um, my biggest thing is always trying to be conversational. Like that's my number one goal. And, and, and second is not trying to talk too much. Mm-hmm. So I've been, you know at least pleased with the fact that when I watch back, I think I've done a decent job of that. I mean, there's certain little things I want to improve on. And, you know, like you notice you say, like, maybe there are some crutch words or phrases that you right, like, yeah. oh, I use that a lot. I should try. And so that's the stuff that nothing crazy, but just it's been good to do and just kind of a self-evaluation. Why not? It's been a good time for it. Yeah. And just learning more about, as you mentioned, games and and history and all these different things. Um, Speaking of which, what we've also been doing is drinking. And that's also a nice (laughs) little aspect of this show and how my last one of my last names rhymes with it. So today we are drinking. I basically told you what we were drinking just because of our friendship and the years that we spent drinking moscow mules cheers so we got and i made sure to have tito's in here because i know you're gluten free yes and you, i committed to that um have, but we got a little moscow mules kev and i used to drink these by the boatload that's <laughs> that's that's great you know that's how we became incredible broadcasters so <laughs> exactly cheers right. and kev what are we toasting to today we're toasting to how about how about health that's a good time to toast to health let's do that okay to health Cheers, JS. Cheers. Mm. Okay, so in the in the mule that I made, Tito's little lime and uh, ginger beer, but also a little new little twist I've done. You know, I've learned a lot about making drinks during this pandemic. Mm-hmm. I've been, uh, a couple splashes of orange bitters mixed Ooh, in. Really nice little flavor. Yeah, that's for the next one. I should have I should have probably told you that beforehand. Uh, so you okay, can that's taste cool. It right All right, I'll, I'll add the orange bitters. I'll also next time buy ginger beer instead of ginger ale, which I bought today <laughs> at 9 a.m. when I went to the store. And I thought I looked at it and it looked, you know, it was in one of those glass bottles. I'm looking at it like, yeah, that looks like ginger beer. Doesn't say ginger beer, but hey, you know what? We're all we're all struggling sometimes during this time. Still does a trick. So hey, it, um, it substitutes are fine in this in this time and day. It right? is. It is really. It doesn't matter as long as you're getting through it. So, guys, we have so much to talk with Kevin Burkhardt about on this show. Uh, he's had an incredible meteoric rise. But before that, he was grinding it out like all of us trying to make that dream happen. We're going to get into all that and a whole lot more when we come back after the break on Drinks with Thanks. Welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB, and we've got Kevin Burkhart from Fox Sports here. You know him from MLB on Fox and NFL on Fox. And Kevin, before you were a big wig in Hermosa Beach, Los Angeles, <laughs> and hanging out with A-Rod, you were here in New York City. And it's so funny. You and I became friends in California. We both worked at Fox Sports. Mm-hmm. But then I've now gone to where you used to live in New York City, and I work for one of your former employers. So how I explained it to my boyfriend was your career went like this and we passed each other sort of like in the midway point and now now we're like this. So you're, I You're crazy. <laughs> Um, we are in New York City. You spent a lot of time with SNY and covering the Mets and you know, you saw so many different things when you were there. I got to ask you, I mean, like, what's your sort of like favorite lasting baseball memory from covering the New York Mets? I'm going to be the easy one off the field. And it was my last uh, home game in 2014. Uh, you know, you'll never see anything like it. I mean, that's why Mets fans are the best. I mean, I, I grew up one, so I kind of, you know, I, I empathize. I know I know the team doesn't win very often, and I get what it's like to be a Mets fan. So I think I understood um, the fan base quite a bit. And, you know, so, you know, when you're doing my job, when you're walking around the stadium, you get to know a lot of people. You see a lot of the, the ticket holders and you, a lot of the same people. You interact with them on social media whatever and 
you know, the seven line group, which was like this awesome, you know, for those who don't know who are in New York, this awesome big fan base that uh, Darren Meaning created. And it just turned into this really cool thing. There's this huge group. They all wear, you know, orange and they come to games and they do chants and claps. And it's, it's just great. So they became a thing and it just, you know, just became friendly with them, seeing them. And it's just really a fun, uh, a fun vibe at the games. So the last home game that I had in 2014, the whole bridge, the whole outfield area and right field, the bridge and center field was just packed with fans with like um, posters. In fact, I, I have one of the posters hanging in my uh, my room right here in the office um, from them. It's, you know, and it, it's a poster that says, good luck, Kev. And it has like a ton of fans that signed oh, it. That's so and cool. they were all just. I mean, the whole thing was just packed with people. And so like in the seventh inning, I just went out and was like talking to people and high five. And so, you know, I'll never forget that as long as I live. That was that was pretty amazing for a silly sideline reporter to get that kind of love from people, you know? Yeah, well, as you mentioned, you know, people people are obsessed with the Mets. The fans love and hate sort of the torture of being being a fan and you were there for seven seasons. That that's a long time to be ingrained with the team. And since you've left you covered them with Fox going to the World Series, but they've had a lot of ups and downs, whether it's, you know, Matt Harvey being a star and then going, being on the bottom and then David Wright and his issues. If you had to sort of figure out since the Mets, when you left, why things haven't worked, what would it be? What would be the reason? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, you know, the Mets are always there, there's always something, right? I mean, there's always something that seems like with them, and yeah, the, you know, so they I, I leave, and then the next year they go to the World Series, which was cool per, from a personal perspective because I got to be there with Fox, so that was really neat. And look, you know, I think that Game Five kind of surmised it. Matt Harvey was unbelievable. Um, they decided to leave him in. It didn't pay off. The Royals won. I, you know, uh, that series could have gone either way. Game One was a game changer. How they lost that game. When you have a young core of at the time it was Jacob deGrom who's obviously turned into if not the best one of the best pitchers in the game Matt Harvey unfortunately injuries and, and other things for him has kind of derailed him a little bit Zach Wheeler's had a lot of injuries he just got a nice contract from the Phillies and Steven Matz all these really young pitchers together like so as, as a fan you're thinking oh my gosh these this rotation for years is going to be the greatest thing ever it, it usually doesn't work out right mm-hmm. because injuries and timing and maybe some guys have a great year and other guys have a subpar year it just you know, what you have envisioned for this team going forward, it hadn't totally played out. Now, they have a lot of talent, right? I mean, they had, I mean, obviously with DeGrom and Alonzo last year, but they never can really time it all together, it seems like. Uh, you know, and when I left, they had a good couple of years, World Series, playoffs, um, yeah. just not enough. And that's usually their story. You know, I, I, I do like their team this year once we get back to playing. But, you know, for the Mets, you always seem like you have to overcome the, the additional obstacle <laughs> besides just being a good team. So it's, it's, I think it's just a lot of that stuff, timing, injuries, and that's, that plays a big role. Yeah, well, we have a lot of Mets fans on our show, too. So I know that they would be. And by a lot, I pretty just much mean RPA Danielle. So I feel bad for her right now. Uh, but you know what? Hey, they're not losing, right? That's like the upside at this point. And Correct. You know, Currently, no. Rehab from surgery when there's no season. So positives. Also hey, hey, easy on the easy on the no season. My goodness. We'd like to work. I mean, right here. now. Yeah, right now. I'll get into the the season that will happen later on in the show. Um, Okay. Before you ended up with SNY and before, you know, you did some radio stuff with WFAN, I was reading, you know, about you then becoming, deciding to become a car salesman. Like take me through those first early days when maybe things weren't happening as quickly as they are now. Yeah. You know, so I had worked at a school, I mean, basic synopsis, I'd worked at a school for a local radio station uh, in New Jersey. And unfortunately that station is not there anymore, which is sad to me, but it was a 1000 watt radio station that went off the air at night. And, you know, it was cool. It was great learning experience, did high school sports there, did high school football, had a little talk show, did some sales and some public relations stuff. Like kind of dipped my foot in every bit of the of the pond over there and learned a lot about myself. And it was hard to to get to the next step. I did like little things, you know, little side jobs along the way. I did minor league baseball for four years, um, you know, bounced around little things, but I just could not get like in the door, essentially. Mm-hmm. I couldn't get a call back. It's just so hard. You know, 
you send out a million things, you know, and at that time I was sending out CD demos. I mean, oh, that's yeah. how old I am. But I did that um, too. So yeah, <laughs> I'm also crazy, old. right? Yeah. Feels like it was yesterday. <laughs> But, you know, just not to get a call back, not to get an email of your existence. And and so it that just takes a toll. So I just thought I was good enough to do it. And I just got so pissed at one point. I'm like, you know what? F it. I'm just I picked up the Sunday paper and I was like, ah, what's a car dealership? I just went to the car dealership. I was like, hey, uh, looking for a job. Guys, like, you ever done it before? No. He's like, all right, you're hired. And I just left because I was just tired of it. And, you know, and my friends, some of my friends are making tons of money in, you know, in New York. And I'm like, what am I doing making, you know, 17,000 a year and just really struggling and working? You know, it was it just kind of all came to a head. I mentally lost it a little bit, but it was great. I mean, the, the car dealership, I wouldn't be here without it. It taught me so many life lessons about me and got me back on track mentally. And and just it just learned a lot about myself uh, during that year of what to do, what not to do and you know, it motivated me enough to get back in it. And I made a couple of great friends along the way doing it. So um, it, it was a pivotal point in my life. I wouldn't be here without that. Wow. So then what was it about the car dealership? And you, you said it motivated you to get back into it. What was what kind of pushed you? Well, I had, um, you know, the the owner of the dealership at the time I was working for, um, you know, when he learned what I was doing. He was just like, look, um, I, I, I think I I had gotten like a part time. I mean, very part time. Like if, if seven people gotten sick, I would fill in doing like sports updates on WCBS. And he heard me one night and he came to me the next day and he's like, hey, I heard you last night. He's like, you're pretty good. He's like, so if you need anything, just let me know. Right. I know you work hard. So like just if you have to go or you get a shift, just just keep it on the DL and tell me and I'll let you out. And he was a huge supporter. And, you know, I just really learned at the time, like, you know, when you're selling cars, you get to ask people to buy the car. You have to ask them what you'd like them to pay, what you'd like them to do, whatever. And if you don't ask, you're not getting it. So it was just a lesson where it's like, if I don't start asking people for what I want, what are they going to say? No. Okay. Well, they say no. And I was always like, kind of like, eh, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. So I was just like, well, f it. what's the difference? So, you know, that's essentially what I did. I just... I, I just started calling people. I called up WFAN and Eric Spitz, who the former boss of mine. And I was like, Hey, you know, I think I'm good enough to work at your place. And he said, yeah, why don't you come in Friday? You could do an audition. And I was like, like for real or, <laughs> you know, and so I just started asking for things. And it's amazing. Like when you ask for things, not that you get everything you want, but you know, like I said, the worst they could say is no. So it was just a good life lesson in terms of, Hey, if, if, if really all the doors close and they say, no, I'll go do something else. Right. Yeah. But to sit here and just kind of take it to the house with that, with knowing in my heart and knowing I'm, I was confident in my own ability. So that wasn't the issue. It was just getting somebody to give me a shot. So it's just that combination of having, you know, Mike be my, you know, my a big time friend and, and understanding what I was trying to do because he knew I worked hard for him at the dealership and then slowly started getting more work and opportunities. And then once I got those opportunities, I think I did all right with it. So, yeah, it was I mean, it was a humongous turning point in my career that that whole year I, it, I would not be here without it that's just incredible now after this interview i am gonna go get on the phone with eric shanks and tell him kevin burkhart gave me the inspiration to give you a call <laughs> there you see there you go just ask <laughs> he'd be like who's that julie Stewart? Get out of here. <laughs> jokes aside obviously i did help start the one for fun all right listen when, when i when i went there the first person i think the first person i met this is when I was still living on the East Coast. For when I walked in and, and I was getting higher, the first person I met, I think, was you. You were on set of the soccer show. <laughs> so you were like my you were like my introduction to FS1 at the time. I really apologize for that. You're like, wow, <laughs> this girl has no idea what she's doing. Why is she hosting this show right now? Um, yeah, that is kind of funny, right? Um, that And I do remember I brought my family from Scotland to see some of the sets. And I think that's when that's we right. came and we saw you. And I was thinking... Right. Kevin must think this is really odd that I have these relatives with these like thick Scottish accents here in Los Angeles right now. But um, those are the good old days. Absolutely loved working there. Just such great people at Fox. And we're going to get into uh, a whole lot more about that and the great people that you work with on MLB on Fox, Emmy Award winning, and of course, NFL on Fox as well. When we get back with more Kevin Burkhardt on Drinks with Things. Hey, guys. 
guys. Welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. We are drinking and binking with Fox Sports. Kevin Burkhardt sipping on a little Moscow Mule action. Uh, we got we dedicated to the cause. We've got the actual copper mugs. And while I take this Tito's, we were just discussing Kevin Burkhardt's interesting background of being a car salesman. And really, if you can sell a car, you can sell anything. I think I think that's sort of what they teach you in car salesman school. Yeah, it's it's like it's like dodgeball. If you could dodge this wrench, you could dodge a ball. Same thing, right? Boom. And that's that's how they like taught you how to how to be able to sell those Chevys out there. So I thought I'm going to give Kev a topic, an idea, and he's got a he's got 10 to 15 seconds, 10 to, you know, 20 seconds to sell me on it. If I believe in this and I want to buy it, I'm going to obviously drink. If I don't, if it's not a good enough pitch, I'm walking off the lot. Okay, stakes are high here, Kev. Let's this see how is good. a lot of pressure. This how, is a lot of pressure. Let's see how much you learn back then. Okay, so All first right. up, who is going to be the MLB MVP this year? Well, this is an easy one. Let me put you into this vehicle that works best for you, Julie Stewart Banks. I mean, you have Mike Trout, who is the best player in Major League Baseball, three time MVP and four times he's finished runner up to the MVP. And to me, even if it is a shortened season of 82 games, the best player rises to the top. There is nobody in the game that rivals Mike Trout. He is, again, the MVP for this coming year. All right, Kev, that was a really good pitch. Whether or not Mike Trout does want to play baseball this year, we'll have to see. But I'm taking that. That was real good. Mm -hmm. Feel good about that. I'm buying Mike Trout. Okay, next up, what do you got, Kev? Can you tell me who will win the Super Bowl? Sell me on it, team. You know, it's hard right now to predict the Super Bowl winner, but I'm going to tell you why the Kansas City Chiefs are going to repeat because they've got the not only the reigning MVP and Super Bowl MVP, or the MVP is Patrick Mahomes, who's 24 years old. Their offense will be better than it was last year, and their defense as the year went on got better and better. And I think with Tom Brady out in the AFC, they have even less resistance to get back. So if I'm picking a team right now, the Kansas City Chiefs repeat. You know what, Kev? I'm not just trying to make you feel good. I am buying that car as well. Patrick Mahomes, any day. Man, no Tom Brady. Boom, this thing is flying down the 405. I feel like I just paid my rent selling these two cars off the lot right now. I feel really yeah. good about it. And I'm drunk buying them too. So that's even, that helps even you know. better. Even, even better. better. That's, how you know, that's how you know it's good. Okay, tell me this. Very big question here. What's the best TV show of all time? It's no question it's Breaking Bad. As a matter of fact, I went back and I'm rewatching it right now because if you like drama, if you like a little darkness, Breaking Bad is by far and away the best show to ever air on television. And here's the main reason. The acting is incredible. You have Brian Cranston, who is kind of a, a more of a meat chemistry teacher who gets this horrible lung cancer designation that it's terminal. So how does he raise money for his family? Well, of course, he turns into a meth dealer. But the beauty of the show is how he turns in from that that chemistry high school teacher to a little bit evil and more evil as the show goes on. Season four, Breaking Bad is the most incredible season of television ever made, bar none. And by every season ender, you're just like... Oh, no way. Like screaming at the television. It's no contest for me. Okay. Well, I was curious when you said meth dealer and evil, but you lost me with lung cancer. So eh, Mm. the best show of all time is drinks Mm. with pinks, baby. Hello. That's what we're on right now. That was a layup. I I thought this show was excluded. I thought this was excluded, this show. You can try. You can try. But you know what? I'm going on over to uh, to the, the other car store down the street. Okay, the, and the, this is I'll a bonus. I'll email you a new proposal. Okay. This is a bonus, KB. Let's see how good you are. Sell me on who would win a hot dog eating contest. A-Rod, Big Poppy, or Frank Thomas? Oh, Big Hurt would win that contest. I mean, I, I have faith in Big Hurt. Listen, Big Hurt works out like a maniac. I've seen him in the gyms and the hotels. But make no mistake, this is a man that could take down food and drink, okay? There is no question about it. And I think Poppy would come, you know, a, a close in the race here. But for my money, the Big Hurt, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna go with the Hall of Famer on this All one. Right. Hall of Fame Big Hurt player and eater drinker. Yep, I am definitely, I am drinking to that. Never, ever would I bet against a guy who played for the Toronto Blue Jays. So there we go. 
Thank there it is, the Canadian tie-in. I was waiting. What did it take? A half hour into the show to get there? Not bad. I usually try to put one of those all the time and turn everything into a Canadian relation. All right, Kev, that was awesome. You're right. The car, this should be part of broadcasting school, right? Because you got to be able to sell people on why LeBron is, is or isn't better than MJ or all these other stupid things that we see on TV all the time. Thank you. I could sell you a used Chevy Tahoe. Just let me know when. Well, you know what? My license expired now, so that's going to be a toughie. Mm. But we I don't take the subway in New York City anymore because who would during a pandemic? So, yes, yeah, so I probably would buy it. Um, so you need, right. a, you need a bike, not a car. <laughs> yeah. I'll take rollerblades at this point. Really, anything. Um, this was fun. Awesome, Kev. Okay, so quickly before we go to break, mention some of the guys from MLB on Fox. And you guys just have so much fun. Why do you guys sort of have this chemistry that clicks? Like you see, I don't know if you're in the background behind you, maybe in your shot. But what is oh. it about the guys that, that, that work so well? Yeah, that's a picture of my old partner, John Lynch. That was our uh, our first playoff game we did together back in 2013. Um, and our crew in the booth, which was awesome. We'll get to but, that know, later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's a, it, the biggest thing is it's a great group of guys. Like, I know I'm busting Frank's chops, you know, and, and just talking about that when you asked about the hot dog thing. But, you know, I would say that to his face, and he would laugh, and he would bust my chops. And same with A-Rod and Poppy. They're just great dudes, and they're fun. Like, so – you know, the stuff that we do on post game, it's not scripted. You know, we're watching the game and, and you know, we're all kind of yelling at the TV like fans and, and laughing right. and jabbing each other. So I think that's just natural. And, and they, the, the best thing about them, besides just being really good people, is they trust me. So, you know, who am I to... Who am I to bust chops of a Hall of Famer on the air, right? Who am I to, I don't know, make some comment about uh, A-Rod and J-Lo, whatever it is, right? But they trust me. They trust me. They they let me roll with that. And I don't know that every crew would be okay with, like, some host just, like, taking pot shots here and there just for a laugh. But I think that's the beauty of them is obviously their expertise on the game. I mean, they're three of the most prolific, prolific hitters ever, but it's just – it's it's the fun factor. It's how they react to each other. It's how they trust in me and let me have a little fun with it. They never take offense to anything. It's all just in good fun. I think that's rare uh, to find, especially with those level of players. I mean, those are those. I mean, those are those are unbelievable names on that panel. Mm -hmm. So we just have a lot of laughs. We have a lot of laughs off camera too. Uh, some of that stuff is probably better left off the air, though. Otherwise, the show would probably be canceled forever. But. Oh. Um, I think it's just it's good and it's it's natural. I think I you know so that's that's the basic answer. Okay, awesome. Well, we have to go to break in a second, but I do want to ask a follow up on that. And you mentioned trust. It it's not every day and not every person that's able to get some of these guys to open up. What was it that was maybe about your interactions or about what you did to make them feel comfortable to get to this level? I think the biggest thing, at least what I always try to do, I mean, you'd have to ask them specifically, but what I always try to do is just make them feel comfortable, right? So just make them feel like, um, you know, I'm never going to let them down or if they lose their train of thought, I got them or I'm never going to put them into a corner or a question they can't answer or whatever. So, you know, it's about knowing their strengths and weaknesses. It's about knowing what they like and don't like, especially at the beginning. Now it's, I could, we could do we could go anywhere. I could yeah. ask them anything. They're all so knowledgeable. And so like, it doesn't matter, but you know, like for example, when, um, when Alex first started, he had it on TV and he comes in and he's, he's super well prepped. He's got all these questions and, and what about this? And what about this? And, and just wanted coaching. And so I knew at the beginning, okay, like I'm going to, I got to take him along slowly here and I'm, I'm going to help him out and, you know, make sure to try and help him get through it the best that I can. And then once you do that, you know, once they get their, you know, like the baby giraffe, once they start to walk yeah. and get it, then it's like, then I don't have to do a thing. Mm -hmm. and, and then they trust you because they know they're not going to, you know, so now it doesn't matter. I could do or ask anything. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's, I don't have to worry about a thing. My job is easy now. But like at the beginning, it's just about kind of building that and making sure you're not putting them in a spot where they don't know how to answer or, or they're uncomfortable or those types of things. Yeah, that's huge. And A-Rod saying your praises on Jimmy Kimmel, which I still find just was incredible watching that live, which we will get to. We have to go to break. <laughs> um, we'll have a whole lot more with Kevin Burkhart from Fox Sports on Drinks and Things.
Hey guys, we're back here on Drinks with Binks with Kevin Burkhart from Fox Sports. My good old buddy, old pal from LA, drinking some Moscow mules. I hope I'm just like cheers. Yeah, cheers. Um, it's good to see you again. It's been a, it's been a hot minute. You have been on a meteoric rise with your career, and one of those jobs is MLB on Fox. We were just mentioning, and for you. Just what has been maybe your favorite ever baseball moment that you could sort of vividly tell us about? Wow. That's a good question. I I mean, you're talking about from my job perspective, right? I'm guessing something that you were part of that you covered that will go down as sort of like someone says best career moment in baseball. What would it be? Yeah. I mean, the two moments that stand out, I mean, there's look, I'm, I love what I do. So there's a lot of them, but the two moments that stand out, I mean, from my Mets days, it was Johan Santana's no hitter. Mets have never had a no hitter being there for that one, uh, which was a lot of drama because he had so many shoulder issues and his pitch count was super high. And Terry Collins, a manager was really struggling whether to let him try and finish it because he knew the history. Um, that was something else, you know, um, being a part of that. I'll never forget that. And, and um, you know, there's only one first no hitter, no matter how many they have in their organization. And um, I was the first one to talk to him right after it on the field. It was that was sure. pretty cool. Um, and it was just such an emotional thing for him to come back from all that he had come back from to do that. And, and then from, you know, the national job, I mean, I'm so fortunate to be around all these post seasons and all these great moments, but when the Cubs, when the Cubs won the world series, I mean, when you, when you break a 108 year curse and even before that, when they won the pennant, you know, being on the field at Wrigley and, you know, was there for the trophy presentation and getting to do that on the field at Wrigley when they're chanting, go Cubs go. And, um, you know, singing the song and, and the, the white W flag is, and, and people just going nuts. I mean, I, I walked off that and I just kind of, that was a one time where I was like, did that really just happen like that? And I'm looking around the stadium as I'm leaving the stadium to go do our post game show. And I'm like, this is really real. Like that mm-hmm. just occurred. So like, that was just special to be a part of that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that gives you just shivers, even if you're not a Cubs fan, thinking about that moment for all those fans that they've been anxiously awaiting for it. Um, now, before we get into some other MLB stuff, I had I was curious about the fact that, like, you work with A-Rod. He, and just for everyone who hasn't seen this interview, it's amazing. Um, when A-Rod was on Jimmy Kimmel, and he mentions Kevin Burkhardt as being an incredible quarterback. <laughs> and I remember watching it, and I was like, wow, that has got to be the coolest thing ever, A-Rod dropping your name in an interview with Jimmy Kimmel. And that was sort of the tipping point to kind of the cool things you've had in the relationship that you've fostered with, with Alex Rodriguez at this point. What's something you've learned about him or you've seen – that maybe was a misconception that you'd had before about him. Yeah, that was, I, I mean, it's, you know, and then he said that and Jimmy Kimmel's like, who the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, honestly, that was so flattering and so nice of him to do. I mean, well, I don't know why he he's doing, he's doing that because he's a, a good guy, you know, and, and um, I, I was blown away by that. He, he does a lot of those things that, you know, you're really like, man, that was so nice that he did that. Um, you know, I had a, I had a friend who, long story short, I'll cut a lot of the details, but at the World Series a couple of years ago, huge baseball fan, and something happened with trying to get into the game and everything like that. And I asked Alex, I said, hey, I, I hate asking for stuff, like for people. I'm just not that guy. I said, I hate even asking this, and you just tell me, no, it's not a problem. But is there any way you can do this? And again, and he said, of course. Like, what's what's uh, the kid's name? It went out, spent time with him, took a picture with him. I mean, like – he does stuff like that all the time. And so, you know, the cool thing is for me, I think I, ne- I didn't really have any preconceived notions about him. I interviewed him some when he was on the Yankees, when I was in New York, I didn't know him, but I knew of a lot of people who did know him and said that, Hey, you're going to, you're going to realize how much he loves the game and, and you're going to like working with him a lot. Cause he is a, so the thing that most people don't realize if they haven't realized it already. And, and if you watch, you probably know he's just a baseball nerd. Like we all are, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. like he's, you know, we'll bust his chops. He'll go home. You know, he's home in L- L.A. at night and he'll text a couple of us. And 
he's watching like the Mariners game, you know, like, and, and we're like, aren't you like home with JLo? What are you doing? You know, <laughs> <laughs> aren't you on and, TikTok but, with JLo right now? Like, yeah, come on. Exactly. But that's like who he is. He's just like a baseball nut. He loves the sport. He loves watching. He dives in. He's super smart and like business driven. Like he has his hands in so many things and, and, and it's him doing it and, and running it. So he's a fascinating guy on a lot of levels. And, you know, I, 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 I I'm really, close to them. I mean, I think he's, I, you know, we've gotten along really, really well from day one. And um, I don't know how he handles as much as he handles. I have no idea. Yeah. I, just, well, I mean, yeah, I can't now. keep up. So then I guess you're really close with him. So you're going to the A-Rod J-Lo wedding, I assume. Yeah. I have been asked that by every, like, that's the first, <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, I, I mean, that would be fun. I wouldn't, let's put it this way. I won't turn it down. Joel, yeah. Well, you know, happens. you, you told me that you've, you've, you've met, you've hung out with J-Lo before. What's yeah. that like? Especially, yes, you, you know, nice kid coming from New Jersey, now friends with J-Lo and A-Rod. Uh, it's fair. I'm, you know, you'll be kind of like, like, what, what am I, what am I doing here <laughs> type thing? You know, we had, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, I guess, quasi normal. It's still weird to me because I just feel like I don't belong at the adult table. I'm at the kids table at Thanksgiving, <laughs> but I remember like there was, um, this was a few years ago. We were actually doing a Mets game. I did a Mets game with Alex and after the game, um, he and Jennifer and, uh, Barty, uh, our, one of our producers who, you know, and myself just went out to dinner and it was like the coolest thing to, to get to know her a little bit and like her, her backstory a little bit. Um, so yeah, you know, they're, they're like normal just with 75,000 cameras following right, them yeah. every day, you know, pretty much. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely uh, something I didn't necessarily, you know, picture happening growing up in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Let's put it that way. Well, it sounds like you're probably going to be in A Rod and J Lo's wedding party. And on that note, we have to take a short break on drinks with things. We'll be back with more Kevin Burkhart. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Banks. We've got Kevin Burkhart from Fox Sports here. We've been talking a whole lot MLB over some Moscow Mules. And uh, Kev, we've had some great stories about your time broadcasting and um, you know covering the league. And right now we're trying to figure out what that looks like going forward. Um, lots of moving parts every single day. What's sort of the latest that you can tell us about what's maybe going to happen with MLB in the next couple weeks? Yeah, I, I mean, hey, I think that, uh, look, there's been some really good positive things for moving forward in the sports world, right? Like NASCAR on Fox this weekend went off without a hitch. And like that took so much work and effort from everyone involved. Uh, and that was a great sign. We were all watching that and like, oh, man, let's 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 have this go great. And it did. And so you're seeing like things start to come back. I think the latest proposal for baseball, I, I, I think it looks good. And, and I know there's some obstacles to overcome, but, you know, the idea of having, you know, a couple weeks of, you know, spring training in June and, and getting a season in July, I think that's very realistic. I know there's some things to work out. They're still going to work out. But, you know, look, there's there's going to be obstacles. I think it's going to change, you know, from now till next week till, you know, August. I mean, I, I think that's just the realistic thing. People want to have like this concrete plan that, this is going to be X and this is going to be Y. I think what we've learned is things are changing every other day. So, but I feel good about baseball coming back. I, you know, I know there's some things to be worked out um, before that, but uh, you know, I, I think that's a good plan. And I, I feel like that's, uh, that's going to be something that's going to happen. So then what does that mean for you from a broadcast standpoint? Like, do you call games off tube or would you go with these teams to where they are? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I, I don't, you know, I, I know they're working on a lot of different options and I'm not sure, you know, exactly where that stands yet. You know, I, um, I, look, I think it's going to be, it's going to have the evolution as really like we all do with the CDC recommendations, right? Like, how do we do it where we're safe, where we're distancing and all of that? And, and I'm not sure exactly what that answer is. I mean, for me, JSB, I mean, I'll, I'll do it in a cardboard box on the side of the road. I really don't care as long as games are back, you know. So I'm sure there'll be some things that'll be different, but um, that's OK. Like, we'll evolve and figure it out. But, I, yeah, I, I just don't know overall like how it's going to be. I just I will feel so good about it being back that we'll figure it out. Right. What would you say then? 
um, sort of in the positive light of like, what would make this work? Like, what will be the reason that this will come back and it will stay? I think what makes it work is simple. I, I, I look, I'm going to go back to being in, you know, it was, I was in New Jersey, you know, close to New York, 9-11 happened. Okay. And all I know, and I know this is different, but all I know is getting through that. And it doesn't mean that sports heals things. It doesn't mean that it brings people back who have been lost. You know, it doesn't, but it, I think sports can help move forward. And after 9-11, the first game in New York was a Mets Braves game. And Mike Piazza had a home run to win the game. Before the game, Mets and Braves players are hugging on the field, like two bitter rivals. It just said a lot about like, hey, this has been a horrible time in our history. But like it, tonight feels like normal. Let's let's move forward. And the Mets won and it was a wild game. And Piazza, and it just it, like it stuck with, I think, everybody in, in, in the area at that time. So I think baseball is the same thing here. I, I think it's 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 normal. It's normalcy. It represents nor it re represents normalcy. So we get it back and start playing. If there's some things that we have to figure out along the way, who cares? But at least it'd be like okay. Even at first, if there aren't fans allowed in the stadium, at least you could turn it on and watch it. At least it feels like a normal day and a normal night. And then we we get to that point of having people back in the stands. So for I know for me, and it's not just because it's what I do for a living, but I just think. You know, summer, like baseball on the radio, baseball on TV, like that's normal. It fit, you could feel like, okay, it's kind of a normal day. I know it wouldn't be, but I just think it helps set the tone and makes us feel maybe mentally a little bit at ease. So, Right, hopefully. and those are, you know, great sort of moments to think about for baseball. But to push back on that a bit, John Oliver had a great, st uh, a great statement that was sort of like sports brings people together, but that's the last thing we need right now when you look at what's going on in the world, the biggest impediment then to baseball coming back while this great rhetoric and these images of people with their barbecues, watching baseball, what is it that would make this not work with a global pandemic? Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, John has his right to his opinion. I didn't see the thing, but that's being quite literal. And, and again, like you, you would expect that, you know, maybe fans won't be involved at the beginning or, or the whole year. Who knows? I mean, I mean, you, we don't know what is going to be allowed in a month. I don't even know it's going to be allowed in a week or recommended in a week or what medicine is going to be available or anything like that. I just think it's adaptability. So, Look, there, it's going to be a little different, obviously. They're going to socially distance things. Things are going to look a little different, especially if there are no fans. So there are going to be things that are going to be weird and, and going to have to be like, okay, how do we figure this out? Or, or what do we do here? Or, um, you know, players, that you're talking about not being in the dugout, some in the dugout, some in the stands to keep away. It's going to look visually strange. But who cares if we get it done? What are, we, are we supposed to just not do anything until we have a vaccine? Are we all just supposed to stay in and never do anything for the next, I don't know, year, year and a half? So, listen, I, I think being smart and being able to adapt, we all want to be safe and healthy. And that's a huge thing. I don't think anybody's running into this blind to say, hey, let's just go play baseball. Everything's normal. But I, I think like everything else, there's a way to do it where it's safe and where you can adapt as news and things mm -hmm. change. Yeah, well, there are definitely people who are running into it blindly, but luckily those people aren't in charge of MLB and sports and beyond. All right, we got to <laughs> take a quick time out. We'll be back with a whole lot more Kevin Burkhardt on Drinks With Things. Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Thanks. JSB with Kevin Burkhart from Fox Sports. We talked so much about your MLB background. Got to get to the NFL stuff. You have been doing play by play. You have risen to the ranks at Fox, and you've had kind of a revolving door of, of people beside you. For you know, they've all gone on to to great jobs. John Lynch and um, Charles Davis. Right now, what do you look for in uh, in a partner? Like, what is it? about someone that sits behind you beside you that that makes your job the best and the broadcast the best uh, i look for whoever fox says they're gonna put with me <laughs> 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 i you know i look i've been fortunate to have two uh, great friends you know as partners i was with john for four years and charles for three years and you know Happy for John, got his team of the Super Bowl. Happy for Charles, he got a you know a nice offer from from CBS. Going to work with Ian Eagle, who's one of my friends and a great 
great guy. Um, so I, I just like to have fun. You know, I just want to make it fun. I mean, we're not doing rocket science here. We're doing sports. So, you know, we're with this group for usually an entire weekend, every weekend. Right. So you're away from your families, your friends. So this is like your family unit. So I just like to have fun, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the analyst is the star of the show and anything I could do to kind of make that happen. But yeah, I'll, whoever Fox says you're with, I'll just be like, cool. Like, let's, <laughs> let's get, let's go. But that's really it. I just, I, I'm light in the booth. You know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not super serious. I think you probably know that. Okay. So whoever Fox wants, uh, likes to have fun and is the star of the show. Sounds a lot like Greg Olson to me. That is discussion <laughs> for Andrew Marchand of the New York Post. <laughs> but before we let you go, Kev, um, we talked about MLB and COVID NFL. We know that your colleague Joe Buck talked about some different hypotheticals going forward. What do you think could be different with, you know, uh, coronavirus is still around when, uh, NFL kicks off. I just think it's too early to tell. Um, you know, look, here's what I'll say. You know, obviously you started, okay, our fans are going to be allowed at the games, at least at the beginning. No way of knowing right now. I, I go, I live in California. So Gavin Newsom, who is the governor, initially was, you know, in his four steps of opening the state was like, okay, you know, sporting events without fans is like down the line here. Well, he just changed it the other day. And now he says, I could see, you know, sporting events without fans in june so i think originally it was august now it's june and that's kind of what we've been talking about like things change all the time and so the fans are the obvious one right if you're doing games without fans that is the one thing that is different but i mean my you know look if i'm taking a guess right now i could see it where it's you know stadiums are open to some kind of socially distant norm where maybe it's not um you know, a sold out house, but maybe the, the capacity is X and they do it that way. I'm just throwing it out there. I have heard mm -hmm. from nobody on this. I'm just completely spitballing. Good. That's I think the fan the show, yeah. thing. Yeah. I think the fan thing is the biggest difference in, in if they're going to be allowed and if so, how many and how will that affect uh, things? It's not, it would just be a little strange if that's the case, you know, from a broadcasting perspective, um, but it's not going to affect the product on the field. Right. I think, I think the product on the field, I think is going to be, the same. Um, and so it's just a matter of how we are, where we are advanced with that. And it's, I just think it's too early to tell. I mean, that's so far away right now, um, but that's just an early guess. Right. Okay. So we have to go, but very, very quickly, you're broadcasting a game and you notice there are sex dolls in the crowd. How do you respond as a broadcaster? I'm going to go on a limb and say, I don't think that's going to <laughs> I I know where where was that was that in, in baseball in uh, Korea I can't South, yeah that South was. Korea <laughs> I'm gonna say maybe we've all learned from this and maybe maybe that won't occur I think they looked like very tasteful sex dolls I didn't even notice to be honest and I always appreciate creativity but oh I'm just throwing gosh. a couple curb you know what I'm gonna get you ready there KB for when I M like it, I like NFL it. season coming back I I got a lot of good ideas okay so we'll we'll get into that in the next time that we do this we gotta go I I'm so sorry but uh, we'll be back after this Hey guys, we have had an awesome time on Drinks with Banks with Fox Sports. Kevin Burkhart, my friend. Good to see you again, buddy. Thanks for answering all the tough cues here on essentially drunk Barbara Walters at this point. Where can we find you and what you're doing next? That's a great question. If you could talk to my uh, my basement PR person, maybe they could help you. No, we're we're um, we've been doing the baseball show every Friday, safe at home on FS1. It's on six o'clock Eastern. So that's been fun. We've had some great guests on uh, every week as well, just talking baseball and talking shop. Uh, that's been really cool. So that's my main focus right now. So. Actually, as I say that this Friday, I am off. I think Chris Myers is doing it because we kind of rotate in, but still watch the show. Save at home Friday, 6 Eastern FS1. Awesome. Other than that, I'll see you from my basement. Yes, we'll see you from the basement. And we appreciate the Moscow Mules here on Drinks with Thanks, guys. Make sure you can watch all of our shows, Working from Home, Wasted from Home, on our YouTube page at Fubo Sports, Instagram, Twitter the whole shebang. We're everywhere. We are grinding during this time to make content for you. We'll see you guys next week from home. 
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Drinks with Binks and all of our awesome content here at Fubo Sports. We know that you're staying home to stay safe. We're working from home to work safe and we've still been able to have amazing interviews. So you want to subscribe to Fubo Sports on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Better yet, hit that subscribe button and have a shot of tequila at the same time because we're drinking from home and we're having awesome conversations with athletes, celebrities, broadcasters, because they're all in the same boat.